We're back with another episode, guys. We, you guys are probably wondering why we have paint on our face, but we'll get into that. But the energy was there for this episode. Hopefully and we did argue a little bit. Definitely <laughs> some arguments because somebody just... Somebody. Uh, you just have to watch or listen to find Don't out... Don't listen to this. ...what thing. happens. Enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of... Hashtag Ask Live Lean TV. That's right. And if... Honestly, I almost went into the show not even realizing that we have stuff on our I face. I was going to tell you, we should just act like everything's normal yeah. because, you know, we don't notice anything. Do you notice anything different? Hmm. No, but uh, this was shot on Halloween, so we're a little bit uh, behind, but um, Happy yeah. Happy Halloween, you guys. What, what is it that Last I'm actually week. dressed up as? You are a unicorn husband. Hey, I like that. <laughs> or, or a unicorn dad. I'm a unicorn mom, and our obviously our baby is a baby unicorn. I feel like like a pro wrestler right now. You yeah. can see like my face makeup on. I'm ready to fight? <laughs> yeah, you do look like you're ready for the demolition. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have never seen our show before, or if you're listening on the podcast for the first time, this is the show where we take your questions on social media when you hashtag them. Ask. Live Lean TV on Twitter. You can put it right here. I'll put my handles down here on Snapchat, on Instagram, and on Facebook. And we love getting all of your guys' questions. It's thanks to you that we are past 30 episodes. It's freaking wow. crazy. Well, this is number 30. And we just can't believe we made it this far because you guys know we did a Q&A show before on BGTV. If you want to see the old school episodes, you should go to our other channel, BGTV, and you can see 29 episodes where we answered health and fitness yep. related questions. Now we're surpassing that because you guys are amazing with your questions. Yeah, so. we, we found on the other show that questions just were too similar all the time. Yeah, so it was just repeating. like it just wasn't fun for us anymore. And we didn't feel like the value that we were bringing to you guys was anything different. But this time around on this channel, Channel. Um, the questions are more creative. There's more questions. Like we got a huge backload of questions. Um, so keep them coming in and we will keep the show rolling. Let's get into the show. All right, let's do it. Okay. First question on Twitter from Dahlia Milan Vela says, hi, I've read about the benefits of drinking gelatin powder for bones, lean muscle, lose weight, etc. What do you know about it? Hmm. Well, I know that gelatin is in like bone broth, when you make bone broth, that's one of the things that um, kind of leaks or leaks out of the bone. Should I say that? I don't know. It comes out of the bones when you cook them, like in a soup, you know, made with animal bones. Um, and so this is one of the healthy things that are the reasons why you should be drinking bone broth because of the gelatin. Um, I've never taken it as a powdered supplement, so I can't really comment on that, but I do drink bone broth from time to time and I like it. Yeah, I've never actually taken the gelatin powder either, but I hear there's lots of benefits of taking it, but just, just like what Jessica said, uh, we do it through like the bone broth way. Mm -hmm. But um, if you guys have been taking gelatin powder and you guys have been getting good results from it, put it down in the comments below and let's have a little discussion, chat about it. Okay, next question is from Argeli Elena Argeli. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what exercises would you advise to tone up booty and abs while losing weight? I want to avoid the flabby skin result. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the flabby skin. So, Not the flabby skin. Yeah, so I guess it depends. Like the flabby skin that you're probably talking about is happens when people who are obese then lose the weight very quickly and then they become, you know, a leaner, but the skin is still there. So you see a lot of the loose skin. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just, let me just see your picture here. If I look at your picture, mm -hmm. you look beautiful and you look um, mm -hmm. not. Like, yeah, you look lean, so I don't think that's an issue for you. Yeah. But if it's um, not that much weight, you probably won't have a flabby skin result. This usually is from extreme weight loss cases. We're talking like probably at least 50 to 100 pounds or more. That's when you're going to get that flabby skin result. Um, your skin over time will learn to kind of shrink down to fit your body shape and size, if that makes any sense. Um, so the longer you stay at that leaner weight, the more chance your skin will have to like, you know, come back to that tighter feeling, if that makes any sense. And a lot of people talk about like, how do you get your skin tight and stuff like that? It's by dropping your body fat percentage. When your body fat gets low, then it's like gives you the appearance that your skin is clinging to your muscles. But really that's the magic of it. There's no like secret to getting your body fat or sorry, to getting your skin tighter other than getting your body fat lower. Yeah, so the exercises you're asking for are the exercises we always subscribe to people if they want to get a leaner stomach, a leaner butt, leaner arms, whatever it may be. What is it? Squats, 
deadlifts, presses, the compound movements really where you're using major muscle group, a lot yeah. of muscles that you're, like you're moving a lot of muscles across multi joints. That's going to give you the biggest bang for the buck. It's going to increase the afterburn effect where you're burning calories at a higher pace, even after your workout. So when you go back home, so um, focus on those exercises, get yourself on a good program. Like don't just be like, okay, I'll just do these exercises here and there with no, you know, structure or no programming behind it. Get yourself on a good structured program. And you know what else? Train like an athlete. Don't just train like a robot, like going through the motions, like try to really put some passion and intensity in it. That's when you're going to get the best yeah. results. When you see people who train athletically, they look athletic. So yeah. it kind of goes hand in hand. So you can't really expect to get an athletic shape with tight skin and lean muscles and everything without training like an athlete. Yes. Hopefully that makes so sense. I would, if I'd recommend a program to you, I'd check out live lean afterburn com. It's been getting so many people incredible results. Mm -hmm. uh, males, females. Even obese people too have done it and gotten amazing results off of it too. Yeah. So check out the success stories. They're like totally incredible. I'm asking you this one. All right. All right. Next question on Twitter from Miriam B. Do you sell damn that's good t-shirts? I looked before but never found them. <laughs> uh, we do actually sell. Yeah, um, so if you go to liveleantv.com, the tab is shop. Think, yeah, or? so up in the navigation bar up there, there is an items I dig. Oh, right, yes. Um, so if you click on items I dig, it'll take you to a page where there's a, a, a link that takes you into our merchandise store for our t shirts mm -hmm. and that's And sort other of thing. items, hats, and I think you can get. Um, a gym bag yeah. right, and other things. And we actually recently just posted a couple t-shirt ideas over on our Facebook page and we're getting some votes in from people asking them which t-shirt do you want. We want to come up with a new t-shirt, like a limited edition one where we have it, then it, when it hits a number it's sold out. Um, so if you want to head over to our Facebook page, you can check out some of the t-shirt ideas that we have there, vote on it, and maybe we'll pick the one. But there is one there that is a damn that's good t-shirt as well. And it's like holding onto a pizza slice and showing the bicep. That one's getting the most votes so yeah. far. So hopefully you like that one too. And we'll put it in a little batch order mm. of those. Yeah. So if you guys want t-shirts, tell us down below and we'll come out with some more. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have from Chris Bravo on Twitter says, does masturbation affect muscle growth? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this is not the first time I've got this question. Yeah, you guys know we're not shy. We talk about all kinds of embarrassing things on this show, so we're going to just dive into yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm, I, I don't know like how to approach this question. Like, I don't know the scientific studies behind if it does or if it doesn't. <laughs> I've heard other people talk about it. Have you tested it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very in depth. Yes. Have you taken notes and I've done data? I've taken notes. I've been like, mm. uh, I'll... Handle my business, go to the gym. I'll be like, and then the next day weights you don't. were not that strong. <laughs> Bad workout day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could take this so many different ways. But um, to be, you know, with a straight face, because we're all professionals here, um, I would say uh, if you're not like, your goal is not to become like the world class bodybuilder, don't worry about these little minor things. Like, masturbation is a healthy thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, I guess. I think my advice would be, you know, use it in moderation. <laughs> don't, don't like go crazy with it. Like control yourself a little. Um, and you know, I don't know. Yeah, like he said, it may or may not affect your muscle group, but muscle growth. Sorry, but um, if you're doing like a ton of it and you <laughs> define a ton, <laughs> like like daily or multiple times a day and you're not, and you're noticing that you're having trouble with your muscle growth, then I would say maybe cut back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like what I have heard from, if I, to be serious here, is that when you do release um, your testosterone <laughs> for a moment, I think it goes down. And so and if you're you go going to right into after. the gym to lift weights afterwards, it's probably not the best thing to do. Oh, so here's a tip. Do it after your weight training session, right? Well, yeah. I don't have an answer for you, man. I'm saying I can just, I know your goal is not to be like this world-class bodybuilder. So this is one of the things where people are majoring in the minors, which it's not going to move the needle. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> don't move the needle. Yeah, but just, uh, 
Um, so your question is, does masturbate affect muscle growth? For you, no. Masturbate all you want, my man. But, you know, Let's move do, on. They do, coaches do tell professional athletes not to yes. engage in that sort of activity but before games. It, so there has to be something to it. Yes, but if Unless you're not... Unless it's just a mental thing, if, really. It might just mess you up My mentally. point is, if you're not a professional athlete and you're not, <laughs> you're just trying to be like, then get in laugh, good shape, bro. then you're good. Masturbate <laughs> away, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> this person's username... <laughs> okay, this is person's username is I have no life. <laughs> um, On Twitter? Yeah. If you buy bread that's not sprouted or from Ezekiel, what are your rules to follow to get the best and the healthiest? So the best and the healthiest, there are other alternatives out there. There's like, there's potato, there's bread that's made with potato starch, there's bread made with rice. Um, those would be your options, but if you don't want to go Ezekiel, you probably don't want to go with those options as well. I'm not quite sure where your reasoning for not. Well, maybe they can't find Ezekiel. Like I know I've gotten messages from people all over the world who can't find Ezekiel in their country. Well, that's what I'm saying is he probably doesn't have access yeah. to the other ones either. So it would just be if you have to have bread in your life, that's fine, but just moderate how much you're eating and just take that into account that if you're going to be eating foods that really um, are not taking you any closer to your goals, that you're going to have to kick up your workouts and work out harder like that's just it if you want to have these foods in your life then work for them earn them yeah um i think some ingredients like you're asking for rules to follow some ingredients to watch out for i would say don't get any bread that has sugar in it um, don't get one that has high fructose corn syrup try to avoid um, breads that have a really long shelf life like the reason ezekiel is so great is it has to be like refrigerated or kept in this like um, you know, you can buy it on the shelf, but it has like this extra sealed, sealed yeah. package in it. So it's, you know, that it doesn't have a bunch of preservatives like those breads that can just sit on the shelf for like months, you know? So try to get preservative free, um, even like buy from a local bakery or something that you know that they're using healthier ingredients. But yeah, you guys know that we don't recommend bread as like a number one carb source. You can have sweet potatoes, any other root vegetable is a really good starch alternative. Um, so try those. I yeah. guess those would be I, our rules. It's just it's not to say you can't have it. Just once again, earn it. Then mm -hmm. you can have it. Next question on Twitter from Mistral2 says, does body type bracket endo, ecto, mesomorph really impact how you should structure your training program? Um, yes and no. I would say like those, the somatypes are important, but not to the degree, like I feel like this is another one of those cases of majoring in the minors, whereas like that's something you wanna get into when, <clears throat> sorry, you're like, you're at a really advanced level or that you've tried a program and not had success with it or something like that. But if for the majority of people who have never done a program before, like you're gonna get amazing results just by doing a program, yeah, exactly. any program. It doesn't have to be a specific one for your somatype or a custom one or anything like that. But yeah. people from all over the world have gotten like incredible results following our programs that are you know good enough for anybody. So it just kind of depends on like where you're at in your fitness journey. Um, if you were training for like a show, like a fitness competition or something, and you want to get a little, much, little bit more specific, then yeah, probably taking your body count, um, your body type into account might help you with that little edge yeah, up, like a, you know, but a, it's not like a total. A more custom plan. Yeah, exactly. So, but it's not like a complete game changer. So here's an issue that, that a lot, I find a lot of like endomorph people make is, Typically like endomorphs, like they'll have thicker joints as well. So they'll mm -hmm. have thicker ankles, which their insertion points are different on their body. So it makes their ankles look bigger, their calves look bigger, their legs look bigger, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And yes, mm -hmm. they are bigger, bigger boned. Mm -hmm. um, so they feel like, like I've had this situation before with people that I've trained, they're like, my legs are already big. I don't need to train legs anymore. Yet they have like bellies out to here. And I'm like, your path to losing this which is one of the healthiest things to do is to lose your gut is through training your legs. So like if you are an endomorph out there and you feel like you don't have to train certain body parts because you're already big or you already have size yeah. in those areas and you don't have to do any more and you just, all you do is just crunch after crunch to lose a belly, that's not the way to do it. Um, right. I know that's not really your question, but that's just a, you know, just a reminder out there to people with your different body parts. Like honestly, like you really, 
I don't know necessarily know why you would train differently, to be honest, unless it's like you said something specific yeah. that you were training towards. Well, just to give you guys like an overview of like what a soma type even means, it's like like you said, a, an endomorph is someone who has like thicker joints, bigger bones, like just thicker overall, and they usually also have like a lazier personality type where they prefer like slow motions and everything like that. So <laughs> that's opening up a can of worms. Uh, no, right? I, I hate to use the word lazy because I don't mean that in like I, a derogatory way. I but you know what it. I just, I mean like more of a slow personality type yeah, I've never versus, heard that. oh, you haven't heard that? I've and then like an ectomorph is someone who's like more fidgety and more like, really? Yeah. You haven't heard that? No. Yeah. So, and then they also have like really scrawny bones yeah. and really naturally thin. So, um, you know, the argument for like changing your training style would be with like someone who's an endomorph, you'd want them to do like higher reps and like quicker pace type training yeah. so that they could more like normalize because it's the yin to their yang. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> no, I mean, if that's yeah. true, then that makes, that's a logical it's, explanation. Right. I, I've, I've never heard that before. That. But then here's the kicker. It's the absolute hardest thing to do because it's completely yeah. against their nature. Yeah. It's like rubbing the grain in the wrong direction, mm. you know? It's interesting. So most like people who are endomorphs, they tend to to um, gravitate towards strength training and more like strongman type competition like yeah. look at the guys who compete in strongman yeah. don't you think they're natural endomorphs like they were probably born with like big boned bodies like yeah. thick structure and everything but honestly then, then that goes back to the point like focus on your strengths and maximize your strengths exactly. and that's right. what their strengths is where ectomorphs right. are more probably endurance based yeah. so maybe you yeah, and i guarantee I, you the strongman guys are not upset about a little belly fat yeah i've never know? heard that that uh, logic behind you before but it kind of does yeah, make that's sense sort of the but i was just thinking if everything. there were people out there who were endomorphs and you were like yeah they're just lazy no <laughs> oh my like, god Ooh. you guys i did not mean that in a bad way <laughs> no it's just okay. the, it's it's the it's like a personality type as much as it is like a body type you know so there's something to it but like i said you guys if you're stressed over that that's majoring in the minors forget yeah. about it just get yourself on a solid workout program and you're gonna get the good results Okay, so Chris Bravo, again, hi, says, um, why are CrossFitters doing pull-ups in a kipping motion? Ah, yes, the kip. <laughs> the kip. Um, well, the reason behind that is uh, CrossFit is functional training. So it's as if, like, what are the movements that you're doing throughout the day? Um, or in extreme cases, like, let's get you stronger and get you doing those more efficiently. So if you think about it, not about every day, that would be like a survival motion that's what I'm that saying. you would need to do. No, I don't that's why I said extreme. Day. Yeah. <laughs> so um, think about it. Like, what is the point of doing a pull up? Like, what's the function of doing well, a pull up? Well, it's like if you were hanging off a cliff and there you, you needed go. to save your life. So if you were <laughs> hanging off a cliff and you had to pull yourself up to save your life, would you be like, I can't kip I because strict form. <laughs> strict form, straight legs, core on, glutes turned on, <laughs> or would you do whatever the hell you could to get your ass up on the, that cliff? Right, right. So that is the reason for, for kipping. I mean, that's my understanding of why they would do ki kipping. That's my logic behind why kipping is involved in CrossFit. Um, it's just to do things in a more efficient way, in a more functional way. But I don't do that. I stick to pull-ups. And if I am doing a CrossFit wad or something like that, and they call for pull-ups, I do the strict pull up like I don't do kipping I just don't do kipping <laughs> I just do I do kipping I do kipping like when I do Brad muscle Brad doesn't do kipping No like I'll do kipping when I do muscle ups <laughs> and um, you know kick ups and all those things Yeah exactly you on muscle ups yeah, for sure Yeah but on pull ups no like I'm focusing on you know creating tension in the lats Well and, it depends on what your goal is cuz when you do a pull up you're doing it as a back exercise and you know intending to stimulate your lats and you know um the purpose of it is muscle growth and yeah. you know all of that stuff so it's it's a different purpose you know i feel like crossfit is more about the numbers and everything so if like you said if your goal is to do as many pull-ups as you can you better kip because you're going to yeah. get a lot more with kipping than and you, you will get with faster and yes. not as much muscle uh you know <clears throat> fatigue strain and right yeah so it's just crossfitters have different goals than bodybuilders do and even then little leaners do you know like you guys know that the kind of programs we create are not CrossFit and they're not bodybuilding. They don't really fit in, in into any of those niches. It's our kind of own style. It's becoming an athlete of life is the yes. way I say it. Is. You're getting better in every aspect of life by doing mm -hmm. our style workouts. Yeah, a little bit best of both worlds. Best of all worlds is what we like to call it. All right. Next question on Snapchat from Dexter Real. What am I looking for in quality when investing in fish oil? Okay. <clears throat> 
quality of so fish oil? We answered this one before. Um, one thing that makes fish oil different in omega threes than like some of the plant based stuff is the EPA and DHA that's in the fish oil. So that's where all the real benefits come from a fish oil from the omega threes. It's EPA, DHA. So you want to make sure you turn that lo the label around and you look at to see how much of it is coming from those sources. Also look to see where the fish oil sources are coming from. So mackerel, sardines, salmon, like where is it actually coming from? Um, you want to focus on ones like mackerel, sardine, like those three that I just mentioned are high quality sources of omega-3s where some fish oils that are lower quality could throw in some other, like it's like that with every type of supplement. Like there's fillers that can be thrown in fillers, there, yeah. those sort of things. So or a different type of oil is the base of it and then there's just like a little bit of fish oil in it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so the, the fish oil that I use is from a, a company called Ascenta Nutrici and um, they were a Canadian company. They're, they were bought out by an American company. I'm not sure if you can buy them online anymore. I don't think you can, but it's if you go to your local health store, look up Nutrici and um, that is like a very, very high quality fish oil that I take. Yeah. All right. So we're on to Apex, Apex or Forever. Um, you recently posted a video saying that cardio after a lift is a good idea. But what about getting in your post-workout carbs and protein? If I lift arms and abs for an hour and a half and then go to the stair step or bike for another 45 minutes, am I just sacrificing the strength of my arms and abs by not eating? And if I eat after that and then do cardio, then do I have to eat again? These calories add up, man. <laughs> Bro, arms and abs for 90 minutes? I was like, really? An hour and a half why and, do you, and then your cardio? Why no, do you bro, need, your workout's too long, bro. Why do you need 90 minutes to do arms and abs? Arms are a smaller muscle group. Abs are a smaller muscle group. That would be the first thing that, that... I think your rest periods might be really long. That kind of... Or you're, you're doing way too much volume for such yeah. a small muscle group. But, I, hey, I don't know your goals. Maybe you want to be the man with the strongest... Rip, arms and rip abs his life. Biggest arms, but <laughs> who knows? Um, but that's the first thing that came up. But what are the qu actual questions? Which, would you eat again? Would you eat twice or like two post-workout meals? So, or? yeah. So if you're doing your cardio afterwards, so what you want to may do, if especially for you where you're... Your hour and a half of just strength training, and then if you're going to throw in 45 minutes or whatever of, of cardio. I would break those apart. Yeah. I would break them apart, but if you can't do that, then sip on some BCAs during your workout, and then after your workout, maybe take a little bit of protein powder, mix it in as well, um, you know, because that's going a long time where your muscles are in that catabolic zone where you're breaking yeah. them down with your training, and then you're breaking them down further with your cardio. Um, but so that's what I would do if that's how long your workouts are taking. But if you're breaking your workouts into 30 minutes of strength training and then 20 minutes of HIIT training afterwards, you know, BCAs are still gonna help you inch your workout, but you don't have to stop and like get something to eat or whatever for that. Just save it for your right. post-workout shake. But if you're like, if you're doing those long ass workouts like that, go do your cardio in the morning or in the evening and do your strength training in the morning or evening, just kind of flip them around. Yeah, I think for the record, we should just be really clear. We don't work out in the gym for two hours no. a day. Like we don't do that. And no. we don't recommend that you guys do that either. And I know that a lot of um, people think that that's what it takes to get in fitness model shape, but no, it takes consistency and you need to be on a legitimate program where you have an actual plan and everything, but it doesn't take that much time. But it does if you want to get into the elite bodybuilder status. Two hours status. a day? Yes, I don't like think you don't so. think Phil oh, Heath, well, the Olympi Mr. Okay. Olympias are training yeah, that much? Yeah, but do you think any of our viewers want to be that? That is what I just said. No. <laughs> that okay. was exactly my point I just said. Yeah, but I know, but we're talking to them, people who we know don't want that goal. If you guys want the same goals that we want, <laughs> okay. then we're totally here to tell you it doesn't take two hours a day. So I would, and yeah, like you said, you can do two a days if you really feel like you need to get more cardio in like that. Just do it later in the day or earlier in the day at a separate interval. Then you don't have to worry about two different post-workout shakes like right in a row. But yeah, I just wanted you guys to know that that's, we don't work out that long. And if we're at the gym that long, it's because we're stretching and foam yeah, rolling and I, doing that type of stuff. That's what I was going to say. The is actual like workout is A short. bigger portion, not a bigger yeah. portion, but like as I get up there in, in age, portion, yeah. the portion of my time in the gym spent on mobility is going up, which then cuts into my strength training size. I mean, the majority is still strength training, but yeah, um, for sure. the mobility is, you know, in the mobility and the cool, like the stretching afterwards is taking up a bigger chunk as I, you know, for my longevity and my health as I, as I grow. Yeah.
But if you guys follow any of our <clears throat> programs, then you know that there are usually our workouts that we provide are usually between like some are even as short as four minutes, four minute, fifty yeah, minutes, but that's... thirty minutes. Up to 50 minutes at the most. Yeah. Like, I don't think we have any workout programs that have no, workouts some, longer than Some of them can creep up 60, to 60, yeah. 65-ish minutes. But, but that's about If you max. stick to those rest periods, um, you should be in and out of there within an hour. Mm -hmm. And if you can do more than that, you got to lift heavier weight or you got to kick, like, right. kick up the intensity. Like, give it your all for that hour. Yeah, that's a really good point because if you don't feel done by the end of two hours, then you probably just, your intensity isn't high enough. Yeah. So your instead muscles, of making it longer, make it harder. Your muscles should be smoked by that point. Yeah. Unless you're taking some synthetic materials. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say if you're dilly-dallying and talking to the girls. Well, that too. Hanging out at the water cooler. Okay, last question of the episode is from Emily Jane 109 on Snapchat says, Hey, I need advice on the most effective workout split. I do full body strength training four to six times a week, hit four times a week, coupled by intense long distance running three to five miles four times a week. That's a lot. I've been keeping this up for almost a year now, but I've been athletic all my life. On top of that, I cut dairy and wheat out for many years while I consider my diet clean and balanced, so I'm toned but not defined. I'm only 19 and this is a lifestyle I want to keep, but I want to be ripped. Any advice on my routine to help me reach my goals? Okay. Wow. 19 years old and that is like a lot of workouts. Yeah. I know what I'm going to say. Yeah. Okay. You want me to say, for, say something yeah, first? Yeah. You give your spiel to Emily. <sighs> um, okay. Well, when I was 19, I wasn't very ripped. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. I didn't even start training, just so you guys know, until I was like 22. So I was kind of a late bloomer in the Me game. Too. Um, yeah, him too, early 20s. So, you know, 19 is very early to be starting this sort of thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't. That's great for you. You're getting a head start up yep. on us. But um, how she wants to know about her training routine. What well, let's she just change? run this down. Four to six times of days a week of strength training. Yeah. Four times That's hit, almost every day. And then four times long distance running three to five miles. So then that means a lot of days are strength training hit and distance running because they have to overlap, right? Yeah, maybe. So that means some days you're doing all three. That's pretty intense. I would say for, I mean, you say you've been keeping this up for a year. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. But I think for the long run, you're probably going to have to slow down that pace a little yeah. bit over the year. It's just going to be hard to maintain. Like once you, um, you know, become a parent or whatever, like life kind of gets crazier. I don't know if you're going to have three hours a day to dedicate to, to your workouts, but. Um, so my straight up advice is recovery. Yes. Like you <laughs> nailed it with your strength training. So you're lifting weights like A plus to you for doing that, especially she as a female. She may not be recovering, yeah. B, you're doing HIIT training, which is great. You're also doing endurance training, which, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what I'm saying is you got to allow your body to recover. Your body is being beat up. It's being broken down. All the muscle fibers yeah. in your body are being torn down. Um, you, you're sell, you say your diet's pretty clean, so you're hopefully you're uh, allowing yourself to you know repair and grow. Clean doesn't necessarily mean that it's enough. You might Sleep. Not be hopefully enough. you're sleeping well. Um, but if you're not recovering, if you're not giving your body time to rejuvenate, you are 19, so you're young, so it probably is 19, recovering fast. 19, you can fast. handle anything. <laughs> but I would cut back on those endurance training unless there is a reason that you're doing it. Like if you are part of the cross country team or something. Um, I would re remove that or re reduce that a lot and take at least one day off from the gym a week. Mm -hmm. But yes. that's not to mean that you sit on the couch all day. Do a yoga class or do a flexibility class or do something. And when I say a yoga class, I'm not talking about these 2016 yoga classes where they have you bouncing <laughs> off the walls with a loud blaring music and everything. I'm talking about like, like a, recovery a type. traditional yeah. yoga class where it's like slow movements, feeling the flexibility, breathing, that sort of thing. So if you're having a problem getting like tone and, and getting leaner, is, I think it's because your body is just like, no, we got to hold on to some of this fat for storage because, you know, we don't know where it's going to come from because you're trying to burn us to the ground. To the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And stress, you know, you, you guys yeah, know that cortisol. working out is stressful to the body um, in a good way. You know, stress is not, it has such a negative connotation to it, but 
some stress is good for you, but too much stress, just yep. like too much of anything is not good for you. Like so sometimes, working out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so sometimes overdoing it with the workouts can turn that stress into a negative instead of a positive. So yeah, our advice would be to cut back a little on your workouts, take your recovery more seriously, yeah. make sure that you're giving your body enough nutrients to properly yeah, fuel you know, yourself. And then you're going to see probably yeah. better results by doing less. I mean, I'd be willing to bet that by that amount of workouts that you're doing, you're not eating enough. Like, yeah, without a guess. doubt. Yeah, like, if you were doing that much, you'd be burning so many calories. Like you would have it would to be, be hard to keep up like, with that. in a 3,000 yeah. calorie zone or somewhere around there for you to be able to repair and grow. So yeah. um, by not doing that, you're not giving your body what it needs to actually burn off the fat. So that would be our advice <laughs> to you. But... Man, I wish we could take some of that energy from you and some of that passion and some of that commitment and like pass it on to some other people. Bottle it and sell because it. Because <laughs> it's hard to get any, some people just to get out there and go for a walk at night. So good job for you, especially yeah. at 19. Yeah, we're focusing on that, yeah. but I would just say at 19, you get you're so long ahead of you that yeah. you know make sure you're going out having fun, celebrating time with friends, like. You know, I'm assuming you're in the U.S., so wait till you're 21 to have a drink alcohol. But <laughs> uh, if you're in Canada, enjoy a glass of wine here and there. Yeah, and definitely keep try to keep fitness as a part of your life and not your whole yeah. life. You know, I made the same mistake when I first started training. I just dove mm. right in and like everything I thought about, everything I did was like you know, for my fitness and it just got overwhelming and too much. And eventually you do hit a wall. And I know yeah. you say you've been doing this for a year and you feel fine and everything, but um, a year is not a lot in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, so. like when you hit 36, keeping up a workout schedule like that is, yeah. especially if you're doing it since you're 19, it's just not sustainable for yeah. your body. So anyway, I think we talked about that question long enough. Great job with that, but take those tips with uh, a grain of salt and do what you do. Do that's, you, baby. That's just our advice. Yes. So that's the show, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that episode. Yep. Thank you so much. We're actually going to go celebrate Halloween now with our family. And um, we're glad we got the chance to sit down and chat with you guys. Keep asking your questions. And we'll be back with another episode next week. Mm -hmm. So question of the day. Um, I would love to know, what did you dress up for yeah. at last, well, Halloween was last week, so. Yeah. Did you dress <laughs> up? Tell us, did you do anything, yeah, and what, what did you and dress up? And if you up? did, what did you dress up as? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys, and hey! Live and lean. Live and lean, boy. Big shout out to all our Live Lean podcast listeners. We love you and would so appreciate it if you would give this podcast a review. We need your feedback to improve and grow. So please give us a review right now.